Now let's just break it down for you, and not in Latin or fancy language. So this is what Nelson Chamisa wanted from the court. Number one, he wanted the court to set aside the election. Two, he wanted the court to declare him the winner. He gave the court another option. He said, if you can't declare me the winner, then the court should give us a new election. On the other hand, Edie's lawyers were saying this. First, Chamisa doesn't have evidence that the election was rigged. The court should declare ED the winner. And then there was Chamisa's complaints. One, Zek and ED broke the law many times. Chamisa gave 14 examples of violations. We're talking stuff like Zek's independence, state media bias, the involvement of chiefs, putting ED on top of one side of the ballot, the voters' roll. Even the scarf made the list. There's several issues that Chamisa brought to the Concord that Malava said had already been dealt with back in the High Court. These are the issues about postal voting, design of the ballot, a voters' roll with pictures, and voting by civil servants. So straight away, these four issues were thrown out. So, if you were a Chamisa supporter watching this, you probably started getting a little bit worried. But Malaba was just getting started. He went into the meat of the case. He started talking about the kind of proof he was looking for. He said cancelling an election is a very big deal. And to do that, the court needs to have really good reason to do so. It needs to have proof that shows that the elections were so bad that they didn't reflect the will of the people. This is what the court had to say. Now, this is a very long sentence, but we'll break it down for you. Basically, the court wanted to see a smoking gun. The judges thought that what Taban Impofu and his team gave them was just not enough. This is where the Chamisa case collapsed. The judges said Chamisa should have had the ballot boxes reopened. The judges wanted to see the V11s to compare with the Zek figures. But Chamisa didn't have those. But if you argue that the V11 was not the issue, the issue was the fact that Zek changed this result three times. Still, the court said as long as someone gets the 50% plus one vote, any other changes above that doesn't matter. And so, this is where we are. The court has made its decision, the judgment is out, and the inauguration has happened. Shout out to whoever came up with the idea of having that case televised. What a great idea this was. Many Zimbabweans were glued to their screens, following on TV and online. We've all become lawyers. We now know what the fulcrum or the pith of a case is. We're talking about drinking from poison wells. Who knew that the ballot papers and ballot boxes were called the residue? Now, this was a serious case, but it gave us a lot of laughs too. We laughed at the big words. Suck it per alium, suck it per we even laughed at the judge's wigs. By the way, if you want to get one of those, you need to pay up to £2,000 for one. And we were all proud to see these young, bright lawyers at the center of all of it. Even Justice Malaba had to give props to the lawyers. You had Tabani Mpofu and Sylvester Ashiti on one side. You had Louis Uriri. You had Regina Mabwe. And Zek had this guy, Tawanda Kanengoni. Now, when he started talking, we all thought that we were going to go to sleep. But in the end, he was the star of the show. All of these are young guys, and we want to salute them all. And the judges? Well, look, a lot of people are saying maybe the judges needed to ask the respondents' lawyers a lot more questions. Maybe they got it easy. We want to see the judges going after everyone equally. But remember, Tamani Mpofu as the applicant was always going to get more questions. Remember, the judges said that he had a lot more work to prove the allegations. But this is why it was great that all of this was on TV. Imagine if we didn't see any of this ourselves. One side was going to spin it and tell us their versions of how the events went down. But in the end, we saw who said what and who did what. We all got to see what it's like in court. Yeah, it's not like suits or Boston legal, but at least we got to see how this thing works. And you know what? Why should this end with one case? Why can't we have major cases always shown on TV? Let's hope this is the start of something. Let's see more trials on television. After all, aren't we supposed to be in the new dispensation? Haven't we been promised more openness and transparency? Here's a chance for the courts to show us that this is for real. Why not a special channel that shows our parliament and our courts? Well, we wait and see. So, what now for the MDC alliance? The MDC is unhappy. Very unhappy. On the day of the ruling, the party put out a statement saying that we accept the ruling. But then they changed their minds. Another statement came out later that same day saying, no, we don't accept the ruling. Then Chamisa himself came out and said, hell no, I'm not accepting it. He feels cheated. Cheated by ED, cheated by Zek, cheated by the courts. This week, Chamisa's meeting his national council to discuss what to do. The MDC went in hard on the judges. This is what the party said. This was a capture decision of the constitutional court. The judges are not independent, not impartial, and not transparent. But what are their options? 
A unity covenant? <laughs> it's not happening. Chamisa said he's not joining ED. In fact, he said if you steal my goats, we can't talk about sharing them. So what's left? Street protests? The MDC is going to the streets to defend their vote. Let's see what else the MDC council comes up with. Whatever happens, it's not going to be easy. There are already rumors of divisions. The different press releases saying different things showed us that. But Chamisa has been here before. Chamisa's leadership is being tested once again. The last time this happened, he took control of the party, held it together, and went on to run a pretty solid campaign getting 2 million votes. All of this too in just a few months. Not bad for a young guy. Now he has to do this all over again. One thing he has to deal with is his supporters. They believed in him so much. Some are radical, just like church followers. Some supporters are getting tired. Some are disappointed with what they saw in court. They're asking about the V11s. They're asking, where is this overwhelming evidence that you promised? Some want to move on. So on one hand, Chamisa has to keep his supporters believing. Maybe that's one reason he went to court. On the other hand, he doesn't want to look like a troublemaker. What we know is this. Emerson Mnangagwa is the president, but a strong opposition is a necessary safeguard for democracy. The president told us he will work hard to prove himself to those who didn't vote for him. Well, that job begins now. ED supporters are gloating and boasting, fair, fair, fair. But the time for celebrations will soon cease. Let's see what kind of cabinet he picks. That's what will tell us how serious he is this time. On the next episode, we'll have an analysis on our new ministers, Speaker of Parliament and the Senate. Will there be another 100-day plan? What the people of Zimbabwe want is action and delivery really quick.